Today I'm going to talk to you about Symphonics Evolution 1.8 and the new features. Um, so first of all I'm going to start with a very simple score um, and I want to show you different clefs. So if you touch the clef symbol you will see um, you get a menu of the different clefs available and we have um, combined treble and bass which is the default treble, bass, alto and tenor. Um, pressing a clef automatically uh, transpose the score into whatever clef you choose. Okay, and the clef itself is uh, set on a per track basis. So if you move to a different track, you will see how behind the scenes it's uh, retransposed as you move from track to track. Okay, something else that's uh, useful is that if you go into the track settings and transpose the track on uh, let's say up or down an octave, you'll see the appropriate track symbol is shown uh, or octave transpose symbol is shown on the clef. Okay, so that makes it very um, very visible and you can now see when something should be played an octave or two octaves higher or lower. Okay, so that's the clefs. Another major feature um, in this version is the symbol pad. So if you touch the pad button and then again you'll see that the whole bottom area of the screen changes to reflect the, um, all of the symbols that are available and the first few rows are dedicated to different types of note entry and I can pick those up and drag them directly into the score so uh, that gets around the problem of having to select a note drag it, select a different note, drag it now it's very quick and easy to uh, enter in any score that you might want to uh, use um, some other symbols that have an effect on this screen you'll see there are pedal symbols uh, for sustain if I want to use sustain I can just drag the pedal on event and the pedal off event and um, it'll now play that sustain um, I won't um, play it here with the instrument I've got it's a bit difficult to hear but you will definitely hear that through a uh, external MIDI device down the bottom here we have dynamics, um, so ranging from very soft to very loud. And these work by altering the note velocity um, of whatever track you drag them into. So they're a track by track setting. So if I'd like the, um, the notes to start soft, let's say something moderately soft, and then make them loud, and I hit play on that, You'll hear that loudness at the start there. Okay, now the other thing I can do is control that on a per note basis. Um, so I can simply choose, let's say I want to put soft notes in, move the slider down to soft, drag a note and you'll hear this. It's very soft. Or I can go the other way, very loud. Okay, so you've got full control when you're dragging the notes into the score. Um, about the uh, loudness. Okay, another major set of features is these um, coder symbols and um, obviously your DC and DS symbols. So what I can do for example um, is set up um, the song to start and drag this into the score. I can drag an end and finish symbol into the score and now when I hit play okay so you'll see um, that those uh, symbols are used and they affect all tracks simultaneously because you're directing the whole flow of the song um, but they allow you to put in some more interesting pieces and of course we support the coda symbols and the secno symbols as well okay something else that you might find of interest is the text that's that big T icon down the bottom here. Um, the last version that we had introduced lyrics. This version uh, retains that feature but also adds the ability to place text anywhere you like uh, on the screen. So I can drag that up and you'll see it moves a text cursor. Let it go and I get a text entry. Okay, and I can type in anything I like. And it'll put that text on the screen where I chose. So it allows you to uh, to put some more comments and uh, notes 
within the uh, the score. Okay, um, down the bottom here we've got previous event, next event, first note, last note, and they allow you to quickly move through the music. Um, previous and next event will shift to the next controller event or the next pedal event. So very easy to go if you're editing controls uh, from one part of the song to the next. First note and last note for whatever track you're in will go directly to the very first note that sounds in that track or the very last note, uh, which is also very useful if you're um, uh, combining tracks and uh, particularly if there's a lot of um, um, silent rests or silent measures at the start of the track leading into it, you can then quickly skip straight to the, um, the first note. Okay, and of course pressing pad again moves you back to the default keyboard. Okay, the other major uh, feature in this version is the new controller editor. If I shift into piano roll view, you'll see there's now a control button when I click that button, the bottom half of the screen gives me a controller editor and it's lined up with the top half of the screen. Now something very important is that if you're moving and scrolling the screen, make sure you do it in the top part. If you do it in the bottom part, you're going to draw directly into the controller editor. For example, it defaults to pitch bend and it defaults in draw mode. So I can now adjust the pitch bend just by drawing with my finger how I want the pitch bend to go. Okay, and if I play that, okay, you'll see that that controller event is now in the uh, the piece. I can um, use the eraser to reset that. I just drag the section that I want to reset, let it go, and it'll reset the note. Uh, or oh, sorry, the uh, controller value for me. Or I can draw lines. If I want to ramp up, like it's a volume control, for example, I might choose to just draw a line, and it'll insert that line into the uh, the score. And again, erase will clear it. To select the different controller types, push the controller number. You'll get a list. So if I want to control the volume or the panning, I can just go volume, hit done draw my ramp up line okay and if I hit play okay you'll see that taking effect there um, obviously um, the uh, dynamic controls that I just demonstrated previously are interfering with it as well so you've got to be a little bit careful how you use these but generally um, any controller now you can edit Finally, uh, you can get to uh, different controllers that require parameters, like your NRPN or RPN. And uh, in that instance, over to the side here, you'll see a data light, uh, data field light up, and that is the parameter number that you want to edit. So, um, if I wanted to edit parameter number um, five, push five, hit done. Now the screen is an editor for that parameter number, which you can see at the side here. Okay, and again, I can shift to any controller or to the default pitch bend and see uh, on the screen graphically. So just um, so you can see if I keep some pitch bend in there and hit done, you'll see that that's now put controller events into the score for me. Um, it's basically taken the events and lined them up with the closest note prior to the event being played. So um, if I touch on those controller events in the editor here, so if I pull one up, you'll see these are all the events that I've just inserted at different intervals after the note. Now previously that was the only way I could do this and I think you'll agree that was somewhat clumsy and, and obviously very difficult. Um, but now with the graphical editor I can use the um, original controller event screen just to tweak it or, or manually uh, key in values or adjustments. The graphical editor is far more friendly. So um, that's the changes in version 1.80. I hope you enjoy it. Thank you.